Hey, welcome to Kingdom Chats. I'm Caleb. And I'm Kara. And together we have the great joy of being the Young Families Pastors here at Wine Press Church, leading the amazing community, which is Kingdom Families, and hosting this podcast, where together we are exploring practical ways to live out His kingdom in our everyday lives. That's it. And each episode is designed as a conversation starter. Yeah. So we're going to unpack the word together hopefully to spark conversations in your world because that's where the real value is when you can actually explore it with your spouse, your kids and your community group. That's exactly right. So every week along with the episode, we release discussion questions specifically designed to discuss with your spouse, your kids and your community group. You can find them every week at winepress.org.au forward slash kingdom chats. That's winepress.org.au forward slash kingdom chats. So bookmark it, put it on your home screen, Print it on your wall, do whatever you got to do. Go there every week uh, to explore those questions together. And together, let's see his kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Let's dive in. Hey, Kyra. Hey, Caleb. We're back. We kingdom back. Chats, episode number eight. And we are continuing to explore how we can live out his kingdom on earth as in heaven. Uh, we've been exploring Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And diving into all the different elements of kingdom life, kingdom community. Let's not rehash the whole thing. But yeah. if you haven't been tracking, go back and listen to those because there's some really good things. And that has been, for me, really shaping how I how I view my whole life, how mm. I view doing community and doing doing kingdom life. That's it. Let's dive into today. Shall we read our passage again yeah. in the spirit of our tradition? That's it. So I'm going to let you read it out. Acts 2, 42 to 47. This is our foundation for kingdom, kingdom life. Yep. So it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to breaking of bread and the prayer. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So good. So good. So good. I feel like the more that I've read that and been just immersing in it, the more I'm like, this podcast series could just sort of stretch on forever. Like <laughs> start as five episodes and become yep. 20 and become who knows how many. But we, we're not going to do that. No. Maybe. Mm. Or will we? <laughs> who can say? Exactly. Well, there's so many elements in that. We won't dive back into all of them. Yep. Go back and have a listen because it's been so good. Um, but I want to look at one particular element in verse 47 right at the end. It says that they were praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number daily hmm. those who were being saved. It's an incredible picture, isn't it? When yeah, you think, how cool you is know, that? already on the day of, uh, you know, Pentecost, there was thousands mm. added to their number. Imagine the chaos. And then daily, they've got more and more people, you know, added to their number. It, yeah. It's awesome. Exactly. Chaotic. But uh, genuinely, all right, let's just like park there for a minute and just... Just sit in that for a mm. sec. Just think about what it would look like if that actually happened. Mm. Imagine for us as a church at Wine Press, for our Kingdom Families community, yeah. if the Lord was adding daily those who were being saved. Not like one family every three weeks or yeah. three months, <laughs> but daily. Every day there's new people joining our community. That would be a lot of administration. <laughs> it would a be lot a lot of, of administration. A lot of... Uh, Conversations, yeah. Like I think it would be a lot of chaos. Chaos, <laughs> absolutely. That's that's the first word that comes to mind. Good chaos, but yeah, chaos. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I actually want us to like to park in that for a bit mm. in this episode and say, what does it look like for us as a community mm. to be ready for that? Because we see this picture of kingdom community, and we've talked about those elements: breaking bread, doing life together, attending the temple, and doing mm. gathering in homes, being generous, all those things. And th there's so much there, which is great. But the picture here of kingdom com community is that it's not stagnant yeah. in terms of or activity, but number. It is growing because that is the mm. kingdom. Yeah. God's kingdom is always advancing. His kingdom is growing. And his kingdom is all about spreading and reaching those who are not in it. We, yeah. we talked earlier, right back near the start of this series, about that tale of two kingdoms mm. and that sense of us living in the kingdom of heaven in the midst of the kingdom of darkness. That's the right. kingdom of heaven is not content 
just to sit quietly amongst the kingdom of darkness and just to no. just to go along its way and be comfortable and be happy. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven says we are here to bring heaven on earth. Absolutely. <laughs> we are here to bring light in the darkness and to see people join the kingdom of heaven to see them change their eternal destiny shifted forever yeah that's our job that's what Absolutely. we're here for that's what jesus left us to do and the kingdom of heaven it's not it it's not just us advancing into the kingdom of darkness but it's the kingdom of darkness and those in the kingdom of darkness seeing the life and light mm. that is in the in the kingdom of heaven yeah and desiring that and and wanting that it's not just a we're pushing out onto them no but there should be a sense where where we are there is life and light and you know God's working, and people can see that, and then uh, you know want to be want what we've got. Essentially. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, that's exactly right. So I I would get the picture from this, from looking at this passage, and right through the Book of Acts, and right through the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> that if we have a kingdom community which is just us, and it's not growing, and there's no sense of growth or extension, but it's just us enjoying kingdom life together, then it's not really kingdom no it's no. there's something it's missing an element yeah. of the kingdom because kingdom community is advancing yeah and growing and yep. seeing people 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 join that yep absolutely so i want us to have a bit of a think today what would it actually look like for this to happen mm. and how can we actually prepare ourselves for this how yeah. do we actually set up and be ready for this you know i was thinking about some examples of this examples of people setting up in ways that they are, are expecting to grow or not expecting to grow mm. so for example you know let's think of a couple who is pregnant we know a few couples in our kingdom families community who are currently pregnant as we're recording yeah. this henry and sam uh james and talia maybe others who haven't told us i don't know <laughs> um you can drop a comment below and <laughs> announce it if you want um <laughs> How foolish would it be for them right now to say, we're going to set up our house and to set up their house just perfectly ready for just the two of them? Yeah. And say, very silly. That, <laughs> this is just a nice, uh, comfortable setup for us. We've got our bedroom. Maybe you can have a study, a craft room, whatever. Mm. Obviously, you wouldn't do that. They are all in the thick of it at the moment, setting up their house ready for growth. Yeah. There are currently not any new people living there. Yeah. But they have a total expectation based on some pictures the doctor gave them that and a growing stomach and a growing stomach <laughs> it could just be burgers yeah you never know <laughs> it's not always a sign um but they have an expectation that their family is going to grow yeah so they are setting up their home accordingly yeah so we as kingdom families as kingdom people how do we set up our home yeah. you know that that's us as a whole church collective and community it's us as a kingdom families mm. community um and each of us as kingdom people as yeah. kingdom life as living kingdom lives how do we set up our home you know mm. i'm not just talking about our physical home but how do we set up our lives in a way that we're we're ready for growth but not just ready or willing for growth mm. but we're expectant for it yeah. we actually set up our lives we set up our community we live our lives in a way that say we are hungry and expectant for growth yeah i think that's good and i think that indicates that there has to be a change mm. internally before we can do stuff you know externally to be ready that's right there has to be a shift inside that says you know even though i'm comfortable with you know my friends that i've got here or you know church the mm. way it is or um you know my family unit the way it is you know there's an expect expectancy and almost a a willingness to hold things pretty loosely yeah. and say you know i'm not so um you know stuck on things have to be the same for me to enjoy them or mm. you know that sort of thing but i'm actually willing to hold that loosely and say god i'm i'm so excited for the people you want to bring in for the people you want to connect to me and my family and to the kingdom family to wine press that you know i'm i'm not going to to stay you know, in my box and, and require that everything stays the same, that all my friends stay the same so that there's no space yeah. uh, for any anything else to come in, but that I'm going to be open to what you're doing, what you're working, to establish relationships with people, um, you know, for my world to be a bit unsettled. Mm. You know, not saying that you can't have structures and you can't have routine. No, and that's definitely what we're saying. No. There is value in locking in with quality friends and saying Absolutely. we're walking the journey together there yeah. is value in having rhythms having structure they provide yeah. good baseline for our lives to live yeah. from 
and actually to be fruitful. So we are not in any way saying no. Cast all that off. Do that's not what we're saying at all. But I, Kyra, I, what I hear in you yeah. is a sense of saying we're going to do this stuff, but say God, every part of my life is. Yeah, it's open to it's you. It's open to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in my heart which is off limits to you, God. Yeah. You no, know, that doesn't mean we have no boundaries. That no. doesn't mean that doesn't mean I say every every part of my life is open to everyone. No. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. No. Um, but saying, God, we're hungry and expectant for the work that you're doing in growing our community mm. and growing your kingdom. Yeah. And we're putting our hand up and saying we're going to be part of that. Yeah. We're not gonna let every you know, just sit back and wait for the people to come. No. But we're actually going to be a part of that process and what what God's doing. Exactly, yeah. And, and we talked about in the last episode that the kingdom, the picture we see is it is a bit chaotic. It's yes. a bit messy. And if your if your life has to be so perfectly ordered and perfectly controlled, mm. the kingdom is probably going to mess you up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> because that's that's the kingdom. It's yeah. it's growing. It's expanding. And there's an element of that which just requires that audacious faith. We talked in the last episode about that radical generosity that flows out of audacious faith. Yeah. And this is really an extension of that. It's saying, though, no, I'm going to be radically generous, not just with my things, but with my whole life and mm. with, with, with everything I've got. It's open to you, God, to see your kingdom grow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, as you were talking before, I was thinking about a um, testimony I've heard from a, I actually can't remember his name right now, but a um, an evangelist, if I remember his name, I'll, drop it in the comments afterwards but he was talking about how he um came from the hippie movement in the mm-hmm. 70s and so his life was messed up like he was far from god he was a druggie all yeah. this sort of stuff going on and then his life was just radically changed got saved um what was like i need to get to a church he's made it there at the pub told him you need to go to a church so he's like yeah. all right i get to a church and he went to a church and it was like it was not a church that was ready for <laughs> the kingdom to come. Yeah. They, were, they were happy in their own ways. And he said he got there and he's halfway through the service and he remem- he realizes he's the only one smoking. <laughs> and so it's no one else is smoking. So he's like, oh, I'd better stop smoking. He's like, have you ever tried to find an ashtray <laughs> in a church like that? So he does it. But anyway, he was, he was just hungry for God and God hid his life and he brought all his mates and they all got saved. And suddenly this church is full of them and, and an old lady came to him one day and she was crying and crying after service. And he's like, what's wrong? And she said, you've ruined my church. You've ruined my church. But that, like, that's always stuck with me, that sense where Christians, yeah. kingdom people could say, you have ruined my church by yeah. getting saved. You've ruined my bubble of comfort and how I like doing yeah. church life. And I like to sit here and yeah. hang out with these people and do this and do that. The kingdom will mess that up. Mm. The kingdom will not allow that. Yeah. Now, we also, similar story, but the... um. Uh, Jesus Revolution movie, yeah. so similar. A, a church where they had their system, what they wanted to do, and then yeah, the this kingdom. Is, this is what a Christian looks like. This yes, is. exactly. Doing their happy Christian life yeah. with their happy Christian friends. Yeah, but that's not kingdom. That's not the picture in Acts two in yeah. any way, is it? That's right. We're con- we're all constantly growing, all constantly learning, yeah. and so there's going to be you know people from all walks of life, and hopefully, exactly all walks of life on all stages of the journey. None of us are perfect. We're all growing. Mm. together some of us have just grown at different rates or yeah you know had different upbringings and all that makes a difference exactly but yeah mess mess comes yeah yeah exactly it says in proverbs an empty stable stays clean yeah so you can you can keep your stable clean if you're willing to keep it empty yeah (laughs) but that it also it then says there's great power in the strength of the ox it says it's the power the people the mess that god brings Mm. that's the power to really change things to bring yeah. the kingdom absolutely Gee, there's a lot more we could talk about there I know. but we should probably leave it there yeah <laughs> well, conversation starter not a whole sermon yeah <laughs> so we'll start the conversation we'll hit pause and then yeah. we'll keep having it <laughs> yep awesome well be blessed go explore that remember to um, check out those discussion questions winepress.org.au forward slash kingdom chats um, questions you can explore with your spouse your kids your community group and let's see his kingdom come on earth as in heaven with all of its mess and all of its beauty mm.